Coming up on episode 19 of The Fruck Show, I blend popcorn. Let's give it a try. Nate puts Donald Trump in his mouth. And we look inside Stuart's beer fridge. What's in my fridge? Welcome to The Fruck Show. So, episode 19 of The Fruck Show, guys, and as always, we'll kick it off with the news. A few pieces of news today. The biggest Cadbury launch, uh, probably of the year so far, uh, has just come out. It should be available in stores now. You should be able to get it at least in Tesco, uh, but it should be wider now. It's Cadbury Dark Milk. It comes in two varieties, so just normal dark milk and dark milk with roasted almond. It is a darker and richer version of their dairy milk. So, very interesting product. We're going to have a review uh, on the channel as soon as we can, so as soon as we locate that product. Uh, which may very well be soon uh, around this episode. And Foxes have announced another new flavour. This is the sort of autumn wintry flavour. It's fruit and spice. The packaging looks really nice. Comes in a few flavours. Uh, well, you get rather you get three flavours inside the bag. You get honey and lemon, orange and ginger, and apple and cinnamon. So these are quite obvious spicy flavours, but they do sound interesting. And we probably will review these at some point on the channel. Although, as with other... Uh, Fox's sweets, they're probably only going to be in places like Home Bargains and whatnot. So, right now for our first review, Nate is going to try Orange Donald Trump sweets. Today, I'm going to be reviewing uh, something that one of my American friends, Eric Bylanock, bought me uh, while I was in Chicago, or brought to me while I was in Chicago. It's the Make America Sweet Again orange flavored 3D gummies. Made in China, great lols. There's some reviews in the back, I'll quickly read. One star, not so delicious. Enrique Peña Nieto, President of Mexico. And uh, three stars, love them. Keep them in my back pocket at all times. Vladimir Putin. I don't think they're legit. Um, but I might be wrong, who knows? Maybe Putin loves these. Oh wow. <laughs> actually, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty decent little 3D printing, actually. Let's have a go at these. Ooh, quite firm. Very firm gummy. These are gonna be huge. Yeah, the orange flavor is quite nice, but it's a bit too, it's a bit too subtle. I'm not asking for it to be powering in your face, but it's actually, it's a bit of a struggle just to get the flavor. And what you end up is just a relatively unflavored, firm, chewy gummy. So yeah, I'm not, you know, I, I mean, I know this is a gimmick. I'm not expecting this to be haute cuisine by any means. But I would definitely say, may leave a bad taste in my mouth. Well, it doesn't leave a bad taste in my mouth, but it just doesn't leave enough good taste in my mouth. I'm gonna give these a, a high too, because although they are gimmicky, I will say, the actually quality, I really rate the quality of that print. That looks actually amazing. It looks Donald Trumpy, probably does come up as well on the camera. It's, it's one of the better designed gummies I've ever seen, ever seen. So actually for that, it deserves a bit of props. So I'll give it the, I'll give it two. In terms of an actual sweet, in terms of an actual flavor, nah, it's not great. Thank you for watching. Don't know what I'm doing in outro because this is the frock show. Back to you, Michael. So last time on Quivia, I asked you some questions about a fruit. I said they came in like a basketball variety. I said that they could weigh a lot. I gave a specific figure. Um, and there were a few people who got the answer correctly. So the first person to say it was firework reviews for you. Uh, they said, is it a durian fruit? Yes, it is. Uh, Eminent Rhyme also said this. And then later on, Matthew said it as well. So well done, guys. Now, the question for Quivia this week. It's going to be a similar thing. So I'm going to give you some attributes and you have to guess what it is. Um, so, this was a chocolate bar, I've spoken about it on the channel before, and it had a chewy interior, came in three flavours, bubblegum, mint, and orange. What product is that? Find out on the next episode of The Frock Show. Time for a bit of what's in my fridge. I'm in the garage, as you can see. Uh, this fridge here, bit of a cheat. Uh, this fridge actually doesn't work anymore, but I use this fridge as beer storage uh, and it is very much my fridge. So I'll take you through what's in my fridge, my broken fridge. Lots of exciting stuff in the broken fridge. We'll start over here in the doorway where there's some 
massively random stuff. A can of John Smith's Smooth Bitter, some strange Polish cherry cordial, some sour cherry uh, and hibiscus cordial, a can of off-brand energy drink and a small green bowl filled with bicarbonate of soda exciting stuff let's have a look at the top shelf now at the top shelf there's some exciting things happening there's a bottle of french white wine at the top here we have got loads and loads of bottles of the same beer we've got saint bernardus abt12 they are aging those beers are going to stay in my fridge for a long time and get really old and get amazing some other fr uh, some other beers in the fridge let's pick some beers out this is a pretty exciting beer this is uh Struis black albert it's an imperial royal stout it's an absolutely amazing beer it's 13 percent alcohol at some point that may appear on a top of the hops we've got some other absolute classics in the fridge here it's another another black albert Straffer Hendrik Belgian quadruple that might be being aged as well moving down we've got a few bottles of Gersbun we've got some Orville Trappist what's this here Lervig Lervig Conrad Stout that's a pretty exciting beer some more some more St Bernardus this is a good one the Chester Bourgoyne, this is a, a Flemish sour red ale. It's basically fizzy balsamic vinegar, and I bloody love it. The fridge is beeping at me. That's a get a move on Stuart sign. It's like a um, countdown. Shut the fridge up. To shut the fridge up. Right, bottom shelf. These are the beers that are, some of them are in big bottles that need to stand. Others are cans, things that I will move into the other fridge to drink. Supermarket beer there. Dry Gout or an Oco Mocha Milk Stout, £1.80 from Sainsbury's. For my money, that's the best beer currently available in the UK supermarket. What we got here? Wonder Beyond Brewing Sakura Twilight Cherry Chocolate Imperial Stout, 11%. That looks nice. This is probably the weirdest thing in the fridge. This has been here for a long time. This is Langostein. It's a sour goes beer collaboration between Manchester's Marble Brewery and Holy Crab Seafood, Sna Seafood Snacks. It's a beer with, um, with Langostines in it. I bought that for my wife. Um, it's, it's out of date now. Um, no one seems to be willing to give it a try. We've got, this is quite an exciting beer, Durham Brewery Imperious Old Caged Imperial Stout, 12% ABV. Some more sensible beers over here. This is Easy Tiger, left-handed giant, double IPA, amazing label. And loads of other exciting beers. And yes, there is a Cloudwater double IPA in the fridge. So that is my, a quick, a quick run round my fridge. Thanks for tuning in. So I am reviewing Robinson's Raspberry Rhubarb and Orange Blossom Squash slash Cordial. Uh, this is in a glass bottle. Bottle. Um, and it's got a slightly pink hue, which is kind of nice because pink, pink, pink. This episode is pink. This episode is pink. Everything's pink. I've already made some up. I used about that much squash, which is about how uh, how strong I like my cordials and squashes. But let's see. Uh, I think this is a, this retails for about three pounds. It's slightly more expensive, but hey, let's give it a try. It smells interesting. Mmm, that's really nice. Really delicately flavoured. The orange blossom in there gives it like a real nice fragrance, similar to like an elderflower kind of deal. And the rhubarb and the raspberry both play well with each other, extremely, sort of well. It's not overly sweet, it does taste nice and juicy, it tastes very genuine, it tastes like the genuine flavours. That is actually, that's actually a really nice uh, cordial. I would highly recommend that actually, I give it a pretty high four stars. Mmm. Yeah, that really captures all of the flavours very genuinely. It tastes really refreshing. And it's just, yeah, rendered very well. Well done, Robinsons. This is well and truly the pink episode, guys. We've got pink flowers and pink popcorn. So, yeah, you might have seen earlier this week, I reviewed the Epic Snacks Cotton Candy Popcorn, which itself is pink in tone. And uh, so I thought I'd make a uh, blended popcorn drink with it because why not? I tried a popcorn flavour drink from Sweden the other day and it was very interesting but uh, maybe this will be a little bit more authentic. Let's give it a go. Now, obviously popcorn is largely air. So I'm sort of thinking that this is just gonna 
melt down really easily, right? There's a few really nicely flavoured bits there, so let's get them in. Right. Now only the best the best drinks are made with exclusively delicious, highly refrigerated water. So let's pour some of that in. So it's already turning pink, so that's cool. Let's see what happens. I basically have no idea what's gonna happen here. Well it's gonna blend it obviously, like I know that's gonna happen. I imagine I'll need some sort of filter system. Oh, that needs more water, I reckon, actually. Let's give it a try. Okay, I think that's enough. Like I say, it's going to be very bitty, so I feel like I want to filter it. Okay, guys, so there we go. I did try filtering it, but it didn't really work that well. I mean, I only used a sieve. Um, it smells pretty dreadful. It does smell very strongly of popcorn. It's basically a popcorn smoothie. Terrible idea, but let's give it a go. Oh. Oh. Mm. Oh. Oh. The uh the temperature is amazing. It's like a very chilled, I mean ice cold thing. Oh. Oh. The flavour is absolutely astonishingly bad though. Oh, it's a good thing I'm not reviewing this because this would be a very low score. The flavouring has not come through at all. It's all about the colouring. Like As you can see, that is pure pink. I mean, this might be one of the problems with the actual product. The flavouring isn't really strong enough. It certainly doesn't capture the flavour of cotton candy, but that, that is appalling. Like, um, it's like the, the just the worst of popcorn. The worst that popcorn has to offer. Uh, the texture is appalling. The texture will probably make a lot of people vomit, I think. It's very thick, very, very... Yeah, almost gloopy. It doesn't have much sweetness. It's it's bitterly strong. Ugh. And it, yeah, it's a struggle to get down your throat. Um, this has not worked at all. Uh, it needs a lot more filtering before it even be able to be drunk normally. You can see all the sediment collecting at the bottom, sort of. Um, uh, this is just very, very bad. Very, very bad. And it has not improved the quite mediocre popcorn. Um, it's, it's made it worse. So that's that portion of the show. So, back to your photos again, guys. You can send your photos to us by simply using the hashtag TheFruckShow on Instagram. Right, the Unicorn Ambassadors are back. If you remember them from last time, they actually set up their Instagram page because they wanted to send a, an image in, which is great. They've uh, sent a few photos. So, oh, I'm loving the Sweden flag in the background as well. Uh, so they've got a lemon, lime and cucumber Sprite, which they uh, they really liked. They said it was amazing. Um, we've got that in this country, and I have done a review on it, so check that out, guys. Uh, they've also sent in this picture of this Fanta bottle, which comes with this little Insta Mix sachet on the side, which is a watermelon. Uh, they said that it was a bit of a letdown, tastes like exotic fruit. So that's really interesting. A really uh, unique idea to have that flavouring sachet on the side that you just mix in. I think that's absolutely brilliant, and a very cheap way for Fanta to try on new flavours. Uh, great idea, love that. So thank you for sending that in to us, guys. We've also got uh, this, which I posted on Frogram and used the hashtag the Frog Show. Uh, a bit of a thank you, really, to Luke Carrigan, who sent us the the first sort of announcement, not announcement, just the first news that Quality Street slash Nestle were releasing a new flavour of matchmakers. We've actually since reviewed it on the channel. And uh, I believe that video is up now. But yeah, we found the products a few days later. Very, very awesome. And then Mr. Misp... I can't, I can't pronounce it. Um, this wasn't hashtag the frock show, so do use the hashtag, guys. Uh, but he saw this passion fruit and pineapple flavour Fanta in his local cost cutter. So maybe your local cost cutter will have that. Thank you very much for all the photos, guys. Really appreciate it. Do send your photos in. I really love featuring them. Thank you for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Bit of an interesting, different one. And I hope you saw the... I hope you liked seeing all the different presenters. Nah. Right. Thanks for watching, guys. Next episode is episode 20. It's going to be absolutely incredible slash epic slash you have to stay tuned. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe for more. Cheers.